Shit. <laughs> he just slammed that door. He is fucking annoyed. You know what it is? It's the follow through. It's the follow through. Booyah. The slap, the wrist. F you. What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, it's just me and Harry, the family, and we discuss Jennifer and Ben Affleck uh, slamming the car door. Uh, bullshit ass Steven Crowder is a liar, <laughs> and how to be a real man. Um, uh, and we t we t get into it really deep with some questions and stuff like that. Um, don't forget the Patreon, patreon.com uh, backslash uh, manschool202. Don't forget the consultations. Me and Harry both do consultations. Manschool, uh, DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Harry's at... Uh, Advice, Advice from Harry at gmail.com is where you can reach me. Him up. Don't forget to follow... Dante Nero's YouTube, Man School YouTube, Harry's YouTube, Instagram, all the social media. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all, man. Just keep it coming. Um, things are growing. It's the, the big things are happening. So let's get into it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Um, I'm ready to rock and roll. Harry, you ready? Because we, we got a lot of stuff. There's a lot, lot going on uh, in the last couple of weeks. This weekend, there was some stuff going on. A lot of, a lot of visual. Week, stuff we didn't get caught, we didn't catch up to. We want to get our yeah. take on it. A lot of visual examples of what not to do and what the problem is, right? So let's just, I guess we could just get right into it. The big one, yeah, yeah. and this is kind of, we don't generally do this, but let's, it's, uh, we got to show you some examples. So first, it's the Jennifer Lopez Ben Affleck thing, right? We know the history of, uh, you know, Jennifer Lopez. She's been married, I don't know how many times, four different times. I mean, she would you just got rid of her little young something? She had a little young dancer dude that she was with that broke That was up after A Rod or before A Rod? Uh after A Rod. Oh, okay. And before A Rod. <laughs> oh, okay. It was on both ends. Different young dudes. Different yeah, young yeah, dudes. She, okay. She yeah. did she was uh bridging young dudes. Okay. So uh let's take a look at what we saw this weekend uh as Ben Affleck uh was walking his girl to the car. Let me get this uh thing here. Hold on, share screen, blah blah blah. All right. Wait a minute. Uh, I forgot how to do this. Jesus, one second. Uh, sharing yeah. op sharing options, um, participation, and share share screen. And oh, I got it. Here we go. Uh, okay, so this is Ben Affleck with Jennifer Lopez walking through, and they're walking to the car. Is that a jag? <laughs> Benz, it's a Benz, I think. <laughs> he just slammed that door. He is fucking annoyed. He, and then the paparazzi. I think you got it. Oh, he said, wow. I think you got it? That's I think you said. got it, was what he said. Hold on, you want to see the slam one more time? Because <laughs> yeah. you could argue, hey, it was yeah, no big deal. I think he's dr drinking a Dunkin'. I hope that's the case. Yeah. The, you know what it is? It's the follow through. It's the follow through. Booyah! The slap, the wrist. F you. <laughs> oh, boy. I think you got it. I think you got it. Uh, he's fucking all right. So. Now, let, let, now, what is the what's what's being said? Let's let's go with that. Okay. What's being said about it in the in yeah, public? Yeah. What's being said about it is, this is not good. He's pissed off. Ben Affleck is pissed off. He's upset about something. And he got crying, caught. Are they crying abuse? Or? No, no one's crying abuse. They are crying. Uh, I haven't seen any crying abuse. What I have seen is people going, uh, oh, boy, Ben Affleck's pretty pissed off at J-Lo. They just got married like about a year and change ago. It hasn't been that long. And he's already seemingly annoyed with her right now. All right. Could this be a moment of private, whatever it happens, but it's not a great sign. It's not a great no, sign. Dog, there's no way in the world you're mad. Look, they're, the reason why they're going, they're back together. Let's be honest. They're back together because they can't be not back together. 
they've both been in this, been down this road. Uh, they had dated about twenty years ago, right? About twenty years yeah, ago, they, they were, were an item. It was well, did they they had a name, didn't they have a name? I believe Benifer. it was Benifer, or is that for Ben Benifer. and Jennifer Garner? No, it was Benifer. It was Benifer, and uh, they they so they've been this, and they're back together. You know why? Because they're both older. And they go. They're both sitting down, going, "This, this is the guy for me." I mean, I, it, nothing is perfect, but I, I don't say that it's a bad thing. I mean, the fact that you can be in a relationship and not be pleased with each other a hundred percent all the time, I think that's a good thing. I, I think here's what's interesting. I heard, I heard a little bit of, um, "Oh, this looks. He looks angry. It's, it's kind of abusive. It's this." But let, let's. He walked and. Oh, Opened the door for her. He 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 made sure his baby got in the car. He was a gentleman. It was, it was a gentleman. He was like, look, which I mean, let's let's be honest. What better relationship is there than when somebody goes, God, this bitch makes me angry, but I'm I still respect her. I still love her. I'm not gonna not do the things. That I know I should do as a man, which is open the door, let her, you know what I mean? I opened her door for her. It's just, uh, and then, uh, hey, uh, fuck you. (laughs) You Oh, boy. It's a little. Well, they got into a, a, they got into another thing, apparently, on the red carpet, supposedly. Right? So let's see that. Let's see that. Maybe that'll change your purview. Yeah. I I found it today. Well, we got to get all these things up. Here we go. All right, so that's fine. That's fine. Let's let's see. So far, so good. So far, so good. Mm-hmm. There we go. God, she nah. looks great, though. Jeez. She does look great, but she, let's not let's not let your decisions be clouded by that. It's not. Huh? What? Nah. <laughs> okay where does it go wrong here because i see the clip this fucking i should have gotten a shorter clip this is on me all right that's okay, fine so another touch huh? you fucking bitch don't is that where it happens yeah <laughs> they didn't even show He's this like, what the fuck are you doing <laughs> let's what the fuck Give me another kiss, baby. Come on, give me another kiss. And he's going, oh, she's fine as shit. I love it. All right. Well, I think it's uh I think it's an indication of you know, look, here's the her her history is long, right? The rap sheet is long. As yeah. far as dating rap sheet. And I think it's an indication of no matter how famous or how beautiful you are, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't that doesn't mean anything. And as far as the relationship I mean, I, I, goes, right? I mean, I mean, but are we expecting this to be perfect? Do, I don't expect it to be it perfect. Be- I think a year and change in, they shouldn't be having public displays of problems. This is not a. This is not a year in. This is a cumulative. This is a cum- cumulative thing. You just you don't start fresh. You get back with somebody. You pick up where you left off. And the reason why you pick up where you left off is because. You've been with so much other trash, and you finally, it's just you and the, uh, <laughs> it's just you and the, 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 what you call it at the end of the bar. The, <laughs> the last call? This, the last call. With, so you think there's a case oh, of these two being last call? Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they've decided that this is, this is, they're going to grow old together. I believe they're going to grow old together. Um, the fact that he's not hiding it is, it's like this is what it is. He's he's in a place where he's old enough to um to to kind of express what his frustration is, and he doesn't really care. He, it's just that's when you. I think that's when you really know that the relationship has a shot to work when a man can be who he wants, who he is, because that's how he feels. It's not a reflection of like I'm done. I'm over this. But I don't know any dude who I don't care how fine your girl is. I don't care who you're with. You, you we you get on each other's nerves. 
you get on each other's nerves. And they're in a hyper sensitive situation in front of the media that requires, you know, like kiss me, kiss me again, kiss me again. You know, and now you you see how she doesn't break character at all because she is a no on the red carpet. She doesn't. No. Yeah. 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 But But he. Yeah. But I, I think part of it is you for you still have to deal with shit. Right. You still this no matter how hot she is, it's it comes with problems if you don't know how to handle it. Right. And so. But do we not know that? I mean, does anybody not? Some people don't know that. I don't think the average guy does know that. uh, People think that because the girl is hot that that, that they're not going to get any problems with her. I mean, our guys are really at that point right now with all the red pill stuff, the manosphere stuff, the stuff that I've been talking about, even back to all the way back to Black Phillip. That are we really saying that nobody has a problem with anybody at any time somehow because she's hot? If anything, it's probably worse because she's hot. Sure, because- but that's that's what guy. I think it's a situation of guys putting up with a lot more because somebody is famous or because they're hot or because they're they're desirable, and they end up putting up with a lot more shit to keep that girl around. Let me ask you this: Do you think that that's what Ben Affleck is doing? I think to an extent, I think that's what he did. Oh, yeah. Come on, Harry. He's famous as she is. He's just as famous as she is. Yeah. So, but he gets to date. There's something about dating an A-lister, and something about dating another big star that matters. Well, here's my thing. I disagree with that because either we're saying that people are people, or we're saying people are not people. What I'm saying, what I mean by that is. Either people are annoying whether or not they're an A-lister. They're annoying whether or not they're hot. They're annoying whether they're an A-lister actor or girl or otherwise. Or they're not. Human beings are people, are human beings. On a, At some point level, in, in terms of their level of fame, nobody knows Jennifer Lopez that doesn't know Ben Affleck. They're in the same. But I think what I think the good thing about it is that uh, he's in a situation where he can act like, you know, this bitch gets on my nerves. I love her. I'm going to walk. I'm going to open the car door. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I mean, I, it, that's not like, it's like, it's not like you haven't been there. It's not no, like I haven't uh, been there. Yeah. We've all been there, but I, I think people look at this and go, Oh man, he's got Jennifer Lopez. I think it, it goes to the Will Smith crying in the infinity pool thing. Because you go, this person has a great life, he's with her, and what you don't realize is that it all comes, if it's not handled right, it becomes miserable. Yeah, sure. To me, I mean, he seems without, miserable. That goes without saying, but the point is, who's thinking that? Uh, it's the outside people that are thinking that. Most you definitely. That ben, do you think that Ben Affleck, when he got back with her, he thought that there were not going to be any problems? I think that he thought it would be different this time around. I do. No, nah, come on, man. Nah, you know, I mean, he's not a child. He's not a child. He's, how old is he? Fifty years. What old? does that Damn. matter? We got people who are fifty year old, fifty year olds making mistakes every day, Dante. What I'm, I'm saying is, I'm saying that he. How old is Will Smith, Dante? Dante? Uh, he's probably fifty, close to fifty. Right. right. Yeah, but if if you got a guy who 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 is gonna punk himself out. He's going to punk himself out. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's not like they broke. It's not like him and Jada broke up and then went their separate ways and then found themselves back to nobody doesn't know. Nobody breaks up. I mean, I think they broke up two or three times. They went back and forth, got together, broke up. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. So they know they know what they're getting into. They know each other. And the point is, I agree with you in the fact that when you say, um, no matter how famous they are, it's still a problem. If you're going to be in a relationship and you're going to be a guy in a relationship, there's things that you're going to be, and you still have to maintain your frame. You still have to maintain your, 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 your respect and your, uh, your uh, and the things that you know, and, and guys who haven't learned it before are going to go back into a situation and make the same, the same mistakes again. But even if you know exactly what you're doing, you're still going to get a pushback from a woman. She's still going to test you. So I don't I, I don't think that this is tragic where it could be. In fact, I think it's better that he's more open and honest. He's not trying to hide it. Let me Whereas ask you something, Wilson, Dante. Would you date a I mean, well, it's different with you, but 
do you date a, a woman who's been married four times? Do you um, even, or does that take away from it for you as a person? Because to me, I'm like four times. Okay, Jesus. let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Here, here's the thing. Do you? Uh, does every girl who 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 has sex with you is willing to eat your ass? Wait, what now? Are you asking is or every you, girl that, that that dates you willing to eat your ass? No. Now, is every girl that's not willing to eat your ass not also not willing to eat somebody else's ass? I'm I'm very lost on this philosophical conversation. I, I just, just answer the question. Just answer uh, the question. I I guess not. No. No. What do you mean? So, it, so what I'm saying is, when you put people together. There's a different, there's a different dynamic, and there's a different chemistry, uh, especially when we said we've said this, uh, we haven't said this in a long time, but a woman is a direct reflection of the guy she's with, right? So what, how a woman will act with one guy has nothing to do with how she will act with another guy. Um, now, if a guy, if, if she acts, if she's, if she's horrible with one guy. Um, and she pushes, and then she gets with a guy who's not putting up with the bullshit. Then um, she's he's gonna he's gonna check that and say that this is the boundary, and I'm not gonna push past this boundary. I mean, do you do you think that here? Okay, there are things that you go through with your girl right now. If you were sure. a different person, if you were the person you were when I first met you. Would you have hand? Would you, could you have handled it? No, absolutely not. So what I'm saying is, it, it, it it's a reflection of the guy. This is why we talk to guys. We talk to guys because you can't fix the relationship from the girl's perspective. You can't fix the, it from the girl's perspective because why? Because if you have a woman who's aggressive and strong, and even masculine in some ways, right? She's not going to uh she's not going to be you can't tell her yeah let, let me let me rephrase this you cannot take a strong woman and ask her to be weaker for a weaker man you can only strengthen the man's backbone so that he can stand up to the woman who's stronger when you anytime you see a bunch of girlfriends and they go oh he's nice Give him a chance. He's a good guy, right? That is the kiss of death. You might as well forget about it, pack your bags and leave. It's already over with. Because she, what you're asking her to do is to respect somebody that she already doesn't respect. Whereas if you if the guy says, listen, I'm 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 not willing to I'm not I'm not dealing with this behavior. And if you're gonna continue to, to to act in this way, then I'll just leave. You have to teach the guy to do that. You can't teach. You can't tell the girl, "Hey, be nicer," because she's not going to be nicer to a person that she doesn't respect. You have to teach the guy how to have respect for himself, so he doesn't let somebody walk all over him. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, that's part of it. You have to always have the the self respect. I think the problem is people lose sight of that when they deem something higher stakes or high value and the well, difference oh yeah, is it doesn't always, matter doesn't matter right. what you what it is oh yeah oh yeah so if if ben i mean we, you know we we just talked about ben affleck ben affleck is dealing with with jennifer low with j low she's got her name is three letters but he knows who she is she's jenny from the block he's dealt with her he knows what he's dealt with her she's been in other relationships she he even knows what A Rod put up with. He she knows what Puffy put up with. She he knows what any and he said and to him he's making a, a, a an uneducated decision to say listen, I've been with this girl. I can I can be with some bimbet who looks up to me and goes goes wow you're Ben Affleck you're the greatest or I can look at some, I can try something new but I know who this woman is and he's decided that. When it comes to her, and let's think about it. It's not like he has he's limited to the women he he, he can have. He can pretty much have anybody he wants to have. Yeah, true. 
I mean, he has a lot of options. He's, I mean, he's Ben Affleck. He's a fucking handsome guy. He's famous. Yeah, he has a lot of options. Rich, he's all these things. I mean, why do you think that? Uh, uh, what's the guy? Uh, who's the one that only dates twenty year olds? The one Leonardo they DiCaprio. Wrote. Leonardo DiCaprio. He don't. He's not. He's not uh, uh, dating somebody who's long in the tooth. He's going to get them young before they're before they're ruined, before they're set in their ways. And then as soon as they start getting set in their ways, boom, he's shipping them out. He's sh- shipping them out for a new model. He 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 leases women. He doesn't buy. <laughs> no. He doesn't have a, he's not going to have a classic in his garage. Um, because he probably doesn't have the game for it. Ben is a grizzled, even when he plays Batman, he's a grizzled old Batman who goes, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to fuck with Jenny from the block. Oh no, they got matching, they got matching tattoos. I don't like this. I don't like matching (laughs) tattoos. Uh, That's just the sign. He's an old man. It's it's not like nobody's going, hey, look at your matching tattoos. He's like, yeah. She said, let's get matching tattoos. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. I guess. Whatever, whatever. I guess I wouldn't get no match. But he's tattoos. not. A, he's not a. You know what I'm saying? He's not a new kid on the block either. He's a, he's he's been around and he's making this decision. He's making this decision knowing what he's signing up for. There's no, you know, there's no a misconception about what he's dealing. With. That's all I'm saying. Um, the that uh, you get to the point where you you um. There's certain people that you feel like are for you and you'll always feel that way, you know? Yeah, you I guess I, I guess so. No, I don't disagree, but I, 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 I guess we I mean ultimately we don't know what's in Ben Affleck's head, but I find more often than not, I don't assume that it got, the guy knows what he's doing. That people know what they're doing. Because yeah, most guys just based on their actions don't know. You saying yeah, to but- sign up for this, he'd have to know what he's doing? Oh, he knows what he's doing. He I don't know. I would. Th- I yeah, could say it's just a doing. dumb mistake. Nah. Because what's I the mean, difference between that and a new guy coming in after the, she's been married four times and getting married to her? The difference is he knows who she is. He knows what makes her tick. He knows what m- doesn't make her tick. And he's basically going, I have decided that the good outweighs the bad. He, he I, 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 you know, he's not going in that thinking, oh, I'm, I'm dating J Lo. You know, he's not. No, that. he's not dating J. Going, oh, I'm dating J Lo. But he is, right. I think, going, oh, it'll be different this time. I'm a different person. This will be different this time, and it's not. Oh yeah, he's. It's yeah, not. Is the, this is it being different? Does that mean uh, that they're not going to have any problems? I mean, are we really ass- is our assumption that they're not going to have any problems and they're going to not, not have any disagreements? No, I just assume because it's J Lo, they're going to have many, many problems. They've been married multiple times. She's been married multiple times. Her dating history is like an engagement uh, I mean, history. It's a lot. I don't think. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I being judgmental by saying that when somebody's been married four times, that's a problem? I understand getting married twice. That someone gets you twice, but. Four times. That's that's just your your where the the frame. It's also the uh, it's also it's also in the industry. There's a lot of people in the industry that are uh are, they get married multiple times. Four times is not a lot of times for people in the industry. And to be honest, they're not kids. You know, they're not kids. I mean, she she you know, look when she dated the dancer, right? You like, yo, she's gonna she's gonna chew, she's a man eater. She's gonna chew him up and, and spit him out. It's only a matter of time, you know. So, you know, I mean, I personally don't know if it's really even meant for people to get married for their whole life. I personally think you should have to renew your marriage license like your driver's license, that it expires. You should have to be be able to retest and 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 re up re, re the re Re-register well, your license, and you have a, an option to not if you want to. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole concept of marriage is, from my perspective, it's uh, it's useless. Uh, I mean, that's not to say I wouldn't get married. I've been married once before, but I again, I did that shit for technicality reasons. But I'm not saying I wouldn't get married again. But I, I could give a fuck less. That's for the women. Guys don't give a shit about getting married. We don't. There's no logical reason. I've asked for logical. I'm still yet to receive a logical reason why it should be. 
why well, you should get married. Sometimes you just don't want to be alone. But I mean, there's why one do you have to? Like that has nothing to do with marriage, though. Being alone has well, nothing to do with marriage. Well, that's true. Um, but um, you, well, it does have to do because when you get older and and your mortality is at the end of this, you want people to be able to make decisions, help decisions, and it is a legal obligation where the person who's married to you. You know, can make these legal oblig legal. Yeah, decisions. I get, I get. It's a legal obligation, but that to me is not what is always presented as from a female perspective. It's not about the legal aspect of it. Well, I don't think this is from the female perspective. I think that I, if anything, if I had to speculate, he knows her, she knows him. They know that they both know that the, neither one of them are perfect, and uh, and and they're going. You know. I'm, mean, you know, you look up. I, I like. There's probably five women in my life right now that I could be in a relationship with, knowing what their flaws are. Go back that I, I, I could get married and 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 live with them and live the rest of my life out with. Because I, I absolutely know what what I'm getting from every level. Well, let me ask you this: in a relationship, what is the line between knowing what somebody's problems are? And what you tolerate. Actually, it's a separate question, kind of. What's the fine line between somebody, you know, addressing something you don't like and expecting perfection? You know, where? how do you limit that? Like, how do you look at if you're being reasonable, uh, firm, and fair, you know, when I mean, you break that, that, that down? I was just going to say that reasonable, fair, and fair is what you're asking them for a reasonable request is are you being firm about what your non-negotiables are and are you and is the person being fair with you in terms of how they're responding to it and i think when you ask when you go through that rff you go through that that checklist it just seems obvious so if um you know is it is it reasonable that they could have had a disagreement and they could have uh it, you know, they could have agreed to disagree, but he could have been aggravated. Is it is it uh, fair that because they have a disagreement that he could be upset and slam the car door, right? And is it is it is it fair that they just go through a period of time where they're angry and then they make up later and they, and everything? I mean, all of that is within the realm of of reasonability. Just just you know, just humanity. Just people being different and thinking differently. I, I just think when we we look at this stuff, I think a lot of times that we're, if you practice the principles, is authenticity, credibility, and empathy. It's, it's interesting because I've been doing a lot of consultations this week. And the consultations that I've been doing is um, when I talk about people telling the truth, when you talk about authenticity and you talk about people telling the truth, a lot of times people tell it, they think they're, they think they're not liars simply because they don't lie with the intention on deceiving somebody, right? Mm. Because they're not lying with the intention on getting something or deceiving something to 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 um to to benefit themselves, right? But a lie is also a lie when somebody asks you something and you don't want to you don't want to deal with the confrontation. Or you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. If you lie to protect somebody's feelings or to do that, you're also telling a lie. You're still lying, yeah. You're still lying. And there's no there's no differentiate. If you want real trust, you gotta be trustworthy. Um, I've said this a hundred times. Being trustworthy ninety uh, percent of the time is the definition of being untrustworthy. You have to be trustworthy 100% of the time. I'm not saying that people are perfect, but I'm saying your int your intention and your goal should be to tell the truth all the time. Now, I, I understand that women will ask questions that they don't want to know the answer. I, I don't see any problem with giving somebody a disclaimer by saying, listen, are you sure you want to know this answer? Because I'm going to be honest with you. And I, and I think you can frame it as this. Your... Um, I'm going to be honest with you because I respect you and I want you to trust me. And so I'm never going to lie to you, but I don't know if you want to hear this answer. Mm, and yeah. I've had some women would go, you know what? I don't want to know. Never mind. Yeah. I've had that. And I've had women who said, yeah. Oh yeah, I want to know. And then they get mad when they know. I don't, 
I'm, I'm giving you the... But what I'm you do you... when you do that, and I've done that, what happens is then they, they have to think about whether they want the truth or not, and then they right. come to you and they know that they're going to get the truth and to stop asking right. you questions. Because to me, that's also a form of lying. That's right. deceptive, is asking somebody else to lie to you is to me yeah. lying as well. Now you're trying to make right. me a liar. And I won't participate, right? I will not. I will not. So what ends up happening is they don't. You don't come to me for that, or you only come to me. I've had girls who uh, that I was dating that would would go, "How do I look in this?" And when I would tell them, "You do not look great in that," I would change it. Right. Mm -hmm. So initially, you get the, "Why would you say that?" That's not nice. Don't ask me. Don't ask me because I'm not. I wouldn't want you to go out looking foolish. That's not what I'm going to let happen and, if you ask and me. And I think you also set the premise that if you you make them responsible for the questions that they ask. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's how you should be. I mean, because yeah. you can't really know how to make a relationship better or how to deal with things if, if you're not, if there's not a level of honesty. And the problem is most people are sh uh, shoplifting the pussy. They're in a situation that they don't think that they're worthy of. And so what do they do? They act as if, they act as if they're worthy of something that they're really not. And and then they end up lying to not be exposed for the fact of because they don't want to expose their uh, their insecurities. Yeah. But what also happens is my, I, I would have a girl who would come to me and go, does this look all right? And I go, mm, it's I don't like the way it, it, it looks uh, below your waist or whatever, whatever it is. Like it does not. It's right. it's uh, yeah, in the back. Whatever it's it is, it's making you look fatter them. than you really are. OK. Right. And then they'll change it. And then it becomes an interesting dynamic because I've literally had girls do that and it's gotten uncomfortable where they'll do it to one of their friends. Like, does this look good? They're like, yeah, it looks great. And then they'll come to me. Does it look good? I go, no. And then they'll change it because they know that what I'm saying, it's a weird thing to be like, you ask your friend, but you know, well, she doesn't know shit. She can't, I can't rely that her thing is the truth, but I will go to him because he will tell me the truth, whether I'm uncomfortable or not. Uh, so I want to get your perspective on this then, Dante, if you, uh, Let's take a look at another thing, and this this has been in the news a little bit too, and we definitely kind of we were not recording when this all went down, so we we're a little bit right. late to this. But we're this a little thing, late on it, but we can get into it. We can still talk about all the damage. Uh, I I'm going to assume you don't have the same feelings about Steven Crowder that you do about Ben Affleck. No. Um, no. And what uh, what do you know about this Steven Crowder thing? What is the I'm, thing? I'm, I'm very familiar with it. I'm very familiar with Steven Crowder. Mm -hmm. And I'm very familiar what his take is on relationships and so on and so forth. And his so, take, what would you describe his take is before we play this clip? Uh, women, women have their place. They should sh shut up and be in their woman's womanly place, and they should this serve serve you know, for the man. Yeah, he's a real right wing right wing Christian dude. What what uh, Gavin McGinnis would say: venerate the the housewife. <laughs> venerate. I don't know what that, even that one means. Yeah. What does venerate well, mean? Well, they hold it to a high regard that, that the housewife, a woman who stays home and watches the kids, and so on. This is women have this place, which is a lot of these right wing dudes who are hyper, hyper. Uh, first of all, they're usually libertarians, they're usually racist, they're usually homophobic. They, you know, it's a whole bag of shit that goes with them. But let's, let's go to the clip and I'll. I'll show to you a I door. Mean. All right. Yeah, their whole thing is we're we adoring. We got the volume on it too, or no? Yeah, we got the volume on it here. So okay. we're gonna we're gonna play this as we go. Hold on. By the way, this is obviously. I mean, if, if for people who've seen it, they know. But this is from his own camera footage, his own security footage in his house, yeah. and which his he and his wife. How they got that? Well, I think I know how they got it. Which is the wife is <laughs> so, as we found out later on, the wife. Uh, well, I guess he filed for divorce first. That's a whole other thing. He's fucking saying that yeah. she filed for divorce, but he got an attorney first, and he moved out yeah. of the house He's first. Fucking, well, I will get into well, it, yeah, I right. know the whole story. Right. I think it's like 419 is where it starts. Let's see. Like The uh, another thing is he he he's a failed comic who just some background for this guy. He's a failed comic right wing darling who got he got he got offered hundred close to a hundred million dollars in uh, 
money to be on the daily the daily word daily, the daily, daily beast right no? not the daily, daily beast. beast yeah yeah or daily beast yeah yeah and uh fellow comedian uh dave landau landau actually left his because he was anytime landau would say something funny he would have it edited out and he would yell at people and stuff so he's a you know he's a douche he did have a light that's it's a told Dave Landau to stop talking so he could make his yeah. points. Just fucking absurd that you need a yeah. light to tell your yeah. co-host to stop talking. But let's see here. And let's see the footage. She's trying to leave. Can you she, hear the words? Or no? I can't. Can you? No, you but hear? that's fine. You don't hear it? Uh, yeah, she's like, I need some space. She says, "I love you." <laughs> Hold on, what a what a bitch. She's trying to not hit uh, her him. What a bitch he is because she's trying to leave. Like they're clearly having an argument. She's like, "This is getting hot and heavy. Let me walk away." I love you, but I need space. He's like, "Well, you've never loved me. I don't feel like I ever, I've ever gotten love from you." Uh, and the fact is, when I look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, and you don't listen. You need to be disciplined about it. Oh boy. Okay, so the part about the gloves, you can shut it down. Uh, I'm gonna let me. I mean, if you let you want to go to the no, f- no, no. further part, let's see if we can get the further part, and then we'll shut. I want to get some. Do they have any more? No, nah, they're just yapping over it. Uh, yeah, they're just yapping over it. But the whole thing is like that. He let me get out of the shared screen. Sorry, get out so, of the shared screen. So go you want it. another wife? She goes, She's so saying you want about, another wife. The thing about it is they had a dog. They had a dog, and he, she, she wanted, he wanted to give, uh, he wanted her to give her the medicine to the dog, and she said, "I don't want to give the dog the." She's medicine pregnant because she can't handle pregnant. that medicine. <laughs> She's not supposed to hold it because it'll make the the baby could make the baby sick. And his response is, "Get some gloves, bitch." <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh, well, maybe not the bitch, but he says get some gloves. Um, he also is a multimillionaire. Mm-hmm. She wants to go to the to go to buy to borrow. The, she wants to borrow the car, right? So that he, uh, so that she can go to the store. And he basically tells her the the whole story is that he tells her, "Look, you want to go Uber wherever you want to go. Take my Uber. You can Uber, but leave the car here." Because I need to go to the gym or whatever, the, whatever he did. Now, um, I I don't have a problem with somebody being firm about what their boundaries are. You know, I mean, we all know that, but we also the whole purpose of getting married is to have this child, and we all know that the reason why a woman finds you attractive in the first place and she chooses to have a child with you is because when she has that child is when she's in the place of her, she's most vulnerable. So to not take that into consideration, to not take into consideration that that the child, that she's at her most vulnerable state, and that is the time when you're supposed to make her feel safe. At one time she says, well, I'll get somebody else to drive me, which he says, well, what are you trying to say? Like he th- takes it as a threat, as if you're gonna get some other guy to uh, to to take her, and uh, which I don't, I don't, I mean, listen, she's literally pregnant, um, you know. I mean, and she's there's late so many pregnant. steps. Yeah, she is yeah. pregnant, pregnant. He, I mean, it doesn't matter. In, Just you still don't he's need. Also in a ship, in a situation where he could. <laughs> He could call a car company and have them ship a car over. Really, he's a billionaire. There's no reason he doesn't have two cars. A millionaire, multi-millionaire. Yeah, and he. he, But they have one car. Yeah, but they have one car specifically to keep her in control to control her. And the reason why she's so he's also the guy that that advocates celibacy. He's also the guy that talks about uh, left wing maniacs he's homophobic uh transphobic he's racist he's tried to cancel mlk when when he heard the real speeches that mlk talked about the racism in america so he's a twerp and a grifter right and he's a clown who overall who overall 
espouses these certain things. And then what he did was he used his divorce as a way to 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 monetize and to get people to listen because he was going through such a horrible thing. And, and Candace Owens turned against him and said he's going through some things. And but and then when the tape came out and they told they showed how, you know, that he's kind of he's emotionally abusive and she's going, I love you. But I you know, and she's trying to keep from uh, and all these guys sign these NDA and NDAs because they don't want the truth to come out. But this is the same thing with Ben Shapiro and all the rest of those dudes. They're twerps and they make a certain amount of money and then they want to take their money and they want to keep women in their place with the money. So it becomes the gilded cage that these women, because they don't really, there's no real framing in their, in their manhood and their real confidence. They're so the scared. Only thing they're, genuinely, they're, yeah. they're genuinely scared of losing. I mean, he's scared of losing his wife because... He was worried that somebody else is going to come along punk. and scoop her because he's a pussy. Yeah. He's a punk, and 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 he knows that he's questioning his own manhood and what his own personal value is, other than the money, right? With this quantifiable because he can count it, but he can't keep a woman because he's a twerp, and and so you find this all the time, and, and it, you you know when we talk about this. This high value male, over a hundred thousand dollars, this, that, and the other cars, women. Th this is why the framing of this, the confidence, is not really there. Um, when you talk about a guy like Ben Shapiro, when Ben Shapiro talks about how his wife, how he met his wife, he literally stalked her and forced her into marriage. Little, little twerp that he is. So, I don't know much about Ben Shapiro's uh, thing. Yeah, well, this is all these right wing dudes who really talk about manhood and talk about the, the, the what was a woman and this and the him and Matt Walsh and all of these guys are twerps, but they're horrors when it comes to because they got no game. They're nerds. They got on this internet game and they became famous. And then they've got women who weren't even in their what they couldn't handle in the first place, and they figured they could control them with money and with their power, and ultimately. What do they? What do women do when they can smell the bitch on you? It's only a matter of time. And so the only way you could keep somebody from smelling the bitch on you is if you don't have bitch on you. You gotta not be a bitch. And millions of dollars don't even care. So now she has a lawyer. And they're fighting against the NDA, and he's gonna lose a shitload of money. And he's but he's using his platform to badmouth the mother of his child. Who literally has to raise his children, so, which yeah. is just something else that's hypocritical. He also moved out of the house. Uh, my understanding, tried to cut her off financially, tried to get her kicked out of the house, left, abandoned her. Uh, he wasn't there for the birth of his kids. So it's funny when you talk about the, especially family when Stephen values. Crowder talks about a oh, yeah. family values, and but B yeah, also this is the right wing. I'm a family yeah. value guy. And then it goes against everything. But this is the but this is again, what is this? It's inauthenticity. It's a lack of credibility. A man who's not there for the birth of his child, a man who's telling lies, a man who uses his platform to besmirch his, the woman that's got to raise his kid. The lack of empathy for somebody who again who who is has children with this woman. She's giving him children, and then he's not he's not even empathetic to what her situation, which again goes to the same thing that we teach on this podcast every single week. The same thing: ace, 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 authenticity, credibility, empathy. And there's two things. There's two more things that you, you learn from this. One, the definition of what being a man is especially these right wing lunatics this is a guy he's lifting weights he's fucking shooting guns he's carries doing, a gun he keeps a gun holster he, on he him. broadcasts with a gun holster on whatever and then he's doing Brazilian jiu jitsu he's a man's man you know what's not being a man is not being there for the birth of your fucking kids abandoning your wife when she's nine months pregnant that where, where is that where's the the part about being a man there yeah you could you could lift weights that's great it's great that you can lift weights. It's great that you can fire a pistol. Where are you for your pregnant wife, bro? That's when yeah. you're supposed to be the man. That's where you're yeah. supposed to that's be. The, that's the real thing. And you think you can have one car and, and 
get a house out in the in the sticks so she can't go nowhere. If she wants, it, it don't take long to blow somebody. Mm-hmm. Couple minutes. You cannot police her. You cannot police her long enough to keep her from blowing somebody. She's got to not. She's got to respect you enough to not want to step out on you. And if that's the only reason she's enough. she's not blowing people is because you, the the fucking lack of convenience or access to Cox, that's not a great relationship. Like what the fuck are you doing? But the other lesson that's interesting is for her. Um, this and there's a third thing that I remember about him choosing his wife. But the other lesson is for her as as a woman. I'm sure he was very nice to her initially, but you yeah. got a guy who's going on TV going. These people are going to burn in hell. These people are no good. These people, uh, minorities are no good. Immigrants are no good. And eventually, yeah, guess what? He's going to be shitty to you too. When he's shitty to everybody else, how do you think he's not going to end up being shitty to you? Just because he's nice to you is not, you can't go by that when you're picking a partner. You can't go, well, they're nice to me. No, how they treat you, they're supposed to be nice to your wife. But how, you're, how you treat people, the, the, his own fucking staff, people are talking about what a piece of shit he is. Right. Uh, right. Did you think that you were going to be exempt? Yeah, from, exactly. From who he is? Exactly. You, know, you and I talked about this, the whole Weinstein thing. Is it the Weinstein? The Harvey Weinstein, yeah. Harvey Weinstein thing. We always say, you know, people talk about all the horrible things he did to women. Guaranteed he did horrible, thing, horrible things to men. The only thing that stopped him from doing horrible sexual things to men was because he didn't find men attractive. Yeah, but a guy who get does that, it never gets better. When somebody no. shows you this disrespect, it never gets. He better. was Harvey Weinstein was horrendous to people. Horrendous, not even just from the sexual assaults. Even people, even <laughs> just in, in business practices, he was horrendous. Screaming at people, yeah. yelling at people, throwing things at people. Treating people like trash and yeah. not recognizing that people are creative and not res- rec- respecting people's creativity. And so naturally when it came to, when it came to um, uh, women and he found women sexually attracted and he's a troll, he's going to use that same thing. But this is the, this is the thing. It's like... This is why empathy is important. When somebody shows you that they have empathy, it it also stops them from doing horrible shit to people who are not directly connected to them, who don't who who don't necessarily have the um the ability the, the, the same ideology as you have. Right? There's a there's a and so these are dirtbags, and so I like I'm not I, I don't feel bad either because. You when you sit around with this complicitness mm. of being negative and being racist and homophobic yeah. and hateful and all these things, you think it's not going to touch you. It's going to touch you. It's only a matter of time. And so this surprise, surprise, the idiot. Well, and I mean, I know Dave Landau, but Dave sat there during all the racist stuff that Stephen Crowder said. For the check. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, you cut the check. They cut the check, whatever, until you couldn't stand for it anymore. And I know Dave. Dave's not that kind of dude. But he cut the check, and he was complicit. And this is why. He did it for the check. He did it for the money, yeah. Yeah. This is everybody over and over. Everybody thinks the money is the thing that, the thing that makes you a high-value man. See, if you tell the truth, you say what you mean, mean what you say, and be, and you you care about people. That is the measure of your manhood. It's not a hundred thousand dollars. It's not Lambo. It's not being the top G. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Because all of this stuff comes around and bites you on the ass. You could be the top G, and your father didn't spend enough time with you, and then you give off this ridiculous persona because you're you're missing something. There has to be some kind of balance and honesty and so on and so forth. It's, 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 it's insane how misled we are, or, or especially in the manosphere and the red pill, uh, misled about what is important. And it's funny because I'm watching all these dudes evolve to where we're at now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're slow. No, what do you mean? They're coming like, around? I, I just yes, because uh, so you know I, I talked about fresh and fit for a while and, and fresh and fit. Well, they don't yell and scream anymore. 
I mean, they do it a little bit, but they don't yell and scream. It's almost like they're learning. Why would I expect these bimbos to know they're dumb? You got a bunch of dumb chicks, and you're and they're being dumb, and then you're surprised that they're being dumb. You're 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 stacking the deck. You're also talking about well, what does it mean? What does it mean to be to be high value? They're exploring these things, and they're using this terminology as high value. High value to who? If you're a if you're a guy who wants to live off the grid, and you want a sh- a, a cabin. In a, out in in the in the in the you want to bathe in rainwater with solar panels and hunt caribou, and that's what makes you happy. And you find a woman that's down to fuck with you. How how much how much better is your life if you're doing what you want to do? You don't have to be a top G to be a happy man. Everybody doesn't want that. And Here's a crazy thing, and I say this. I talk about Harry. But I remember when Harry was getting his swerve on, and he had a bunch of chicks, three or four chicks, and you were driving out to Pennsylvania or something. And, and Philly, like, yeah. Dog, I'm, I'm a dog. I'm exhausted. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm going to see this girl, one of my girls. And I go, I go. Do you want to go? Nah, I need to sleep. Well, what do you do? I was like, what are you doing? You, could- yeah. Break it off. You could stop. Part of that is you the ego. Get, yeah, it was the ego. ego. It's, it's the ego. The presentation of this is who I am. I'm a top G. You want to be a top G? I did want to be a top G, <laughs> as uh, our Lord and Savior Andrew Tate would say, <laughs> a top G. So it's, I did. I did. And you have to just then you have to go. Why am I doing this? You know, you have to question why, and that happens all the time. Why am I doing this? Am I doing this for the right reasons? Why am I doing this? Am I doing this because of what this perception is or am I genuinely happy? And there's a big difference. And that's why that's why dating us, you know, uh, why am I dating a supermodel, even though she's an awful human being? Am I doing it because I'm happy or am I doing it because I want to impress other people? She's she's as smart as a doorknob or 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 she's, you know, she's rude and mean. Root, or she's rooted in crystals and sage and stuff. It has nothing, nothing reasonable to say. But in order to kind of decide, like I always say, and this is what I say: Look, if you want to know how to fuck, you got to fuck a lot of people. If you want to know what makes you happy, you got to sample the buffet. You got to, as a man, you got to live and live, and you got to say yes to things so that you know what you can say no to. There are decisions that you made when we first hooked up as friends that you would never make again. Absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. There are things, and even you, if you wanted to, you could put your, you could put, strap your boots up, sure. go out and get another entree, another three I could four, start recruiting five. and have a whole unit put together in a matter of a couple of weeks if and I how, really wanted to. And how how happy would you be? Running, running from state to state, fucking chicks that you didn't even want to sleep with in the first place. I mean, That's you know, ridiculous. the first round would be fun, but then after that, I think the first <laughs> round is where you're having a great time. It's like you know, it's like too many courses. You're like, yeah, yeah, but why this? No, it's it's not. It didn't make me ultimately happy. And no, I'm not saying that I didn't have a good time. I did have a good time, but yeah. at some point, other aspects of my life took took over that were more pleasurable more desirable even within the confines of a relationship so it's not like i didn't enjoy it or i didn't have a good time but then it didn't become worth it anymore certain things certain aspects of it were not worth it either at some point yeah like you know uh, this is too much for me i'm not enjoying this and if it becomes work you're not enjoying it you know it's always yeah. relationships are always work to a degree but when it becomes too much. What you don't want to do is you don't want to be in a situation where you're doing something that you don't want to do. Um, my I, man, I just just before we got on the air, um, my son called me up, and I, I'm I'm not my situation is not the optimum situation. My son is in, but my son called me up and he goes, "I love 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 you, Daddy." Meant more to me than any threesome, foursome. Mm. dirty baker's dozen that i've ever been in ever in my life and so what we what 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 happens is when you have an opportunity 
for to live life and to really see what's important the things if we're allowing what social media if we're allowing what other men who are incapable of making those decisions can decide what a how value man or what makes us happy or what doesn't make i've been with smoking hot chicks who i wanted would rather fucking swallow live kittens than talk to these dumb bitches and I'm not saying dumb because they're dumb bitches. I'm just saying they personally had nothing intellectual to say, nothing in their mind that w- nothing, nothing to respond to or otherwise that was um, that was remotely interesting. And you get caught in chasing this clout because the aesthetics of it are very appealing. You know, you get caught in this lifestyle that everyone is. Hey, I, I, I want to I want a real bad chick. I want the hottest chick here, and I want this and that. I want to be driving the the Bugatti, uh, all that stuff. And what you don't realize is the people who post that they only post the stuff that looks good, and they only and they only keep it around if it looks good. But you don't know what the reality of it, what the facade is. Is that their jet? Is that car leased? Is that a rental? How much How do they the, really have? Have you ever, you ever drove in a Lamborghini? I have not driven a Lamborghini. The clothes, I've driven some Porsches that have been pretty nice, but no Lamborghini. Probably one of the most uncomfortable cars I've ever let, driven in. <laughs> sure, ever. sure. Can't you know? I couldn't see the I couldn't see the the lights. It's so low. It's dark. You're laying on the ground. You feel every bump because it's low to the ground. And ha- worst car I've ever drove in my life. So it's just like, man, what what are we talking about? I mean, I mean, you got to ask yourself. What do you want as opposed to allow other people to define what you what you want to be? I watch I watch my boy Sneeko come back to earth and him and 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 destiny rip this. I'll send you the clip. Rip this dude, this this other is this new? Uh, yeah, it's pretty new. Is he coming rip back to reality? Dude, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually I they might actually uh, we'll, we'll see, but he wants to have me or wants to pitch me to go on fresh and fit but he but just i just texted him i said man it's so good to see you logically kind of thinking about this still still not where i think he he will be when he's older but even byron and those guys and you know just a different you know you you mature and you you're following this thing and then you know but look well we'll see i have to watch the clips we'll see if you ever if you and I'm gonna say this before we go on to the Patreon, if you're a human being and you are willing to recognize your mistakes, willing to work at fixing those mistakes and making them better, you cannot be any more perfect a human being than that. Two things that we will always have to do is make give apologies and ask for forgiveness because all of us are imperfect but if we're willing to acknowledge mistakes and actively fix the mistakes that we've made and make amends you can't be more perfect than that that's all i'm saying let's shut this down tell tell them how they can get you harry Hey, listen, go to all my social media at Harry Turjanian uh, on TikTok and YouTube. That's where I'm posting most of my stuff. But any other social media, you could do that, too. And also uh, join us over at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We're going to do a little bonus content. I believe we're going to answer some listener mail today. That's where we do all the listener mail. So if you want that, head over to Patreon.com slash Manschool202. And if you want relationship consultations, you could hit me up. Advice from Harry at gmail.com. Advice from Harry at gmail.com um let me see do we got any um yeah we got i got some new patreon people i want to shout out uh david t signed up once to a, uh, a day ago angel estrada signed up velvet lulu signed up two days ago kenton massey signed up to have six uh about three days ago um alex signed up uh, a week ago Troy signed up a week ago. Luke Walker signed up a week ago. Young Quang a week ago. Joe Swanson uh, Gaiman signed up a week ago. Edison Allen, Domo Smooth TV, Drew Shears. Wow. And Drew Shears 
uh, two weeks ago. So shout out to all the new patrons. Thanks for supporting us, yo. The numbers are growing. Um, the content is getting better. You see my new bookcase. Um, I've been reading my butt off and trying to get better and trying to get better. Don't forget, if y'all want consultations from me, consultations at DanteNero.com. Click on consult. I'm, I'm, I'm really loving that. That's picking up as well. Also, don't forget to follow my uh, Dante Nero, my uh, YouTube channel. I'm sure we're going to start streaming live on that and the Man School channel. Yo, I love y'all. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all. We are out.